Hi. Now, in this tutorial, what I want to show you is how we can work out conditional probability from Venn diagrams. Conditional probability, this is where we have the probability of something, say A, given, that's that vertical line, another outcome, B, say. So probability A given B, or probability of B given A, and so on. And in this last example, I'm going to uh, just involve three sets, and uh, we've got a few questions here for you to answer, which are a little bit more extended from what we have up here. Okay, well, let's uh, start to uh, do some of these. Now, I've given you three Venn diagrams up the top here, where we've got just two sets involved. And each one is different. Now, in the first one, we've got two overlapping sets. And we could imagine that A and B, say, stand for number of people doing, say, a particular subject, like art and biology. So, just looking at this, we've got two people, for instance, doing art only. Three people doing art and biology four people doing just biology and five people doing neither art nor biology. Now if we're asked a question like this what's the probability that someone does art given that they do biology A given B then all we need to do is say right okay they do biology so how many people do biology? Well, we can see from here, these people, three and four, do biology. They're all in the set here for biology. So that's a total of seven people. Three and four is seven. So that means our denominator here is seven. We've got seven people doing biology. Now, out of those seven people, how many do art? And we can see that out of these seven people, only these three people do art as well. OK, so it's going to be 3 out of 7. Probability that someone does art then, given that they do biology. So given that they do biology, how many do art? 3 out of the people doing biology. What about this one? The probability that someone does biology, given that they do art. So we know they do art, so that's out of 5 people. That would be our denominator. And out of those five people, how many do biology? There's our art. Only three people do biology. So it's going to be three out of five. OK, well here we've got another Venn diagram. This is a special case when we've got two sets that are apart from one another. This is often called mutually exclusive events, where two events can't happen at the same time. And in this one, we've got four people doing art, two people doing biology, one person doesn't do both the subjects. There's nobody doing both subjects. So, what about this one here? You might like to pause the video and have a go and then come back and just see if you've got the right answers. OK, well, if you did pause the video and have a go, let's just see if you've got these ones right. Probability that someone does art, given that they do biology. Well, we know they do biology, so that's out of two people. But how many people do art? of these biology people? Well, it's none of them. So it's none do art out of the two people doing biology. And that clearly is zero. And for this one, probability someone does biology given that they do art. Well, we know they do art, so that's out of four. But how many out of four people doing art do biology? Well, clearly it is none. There's nobody in this set that does biology. So it's none out of four. In other words, zero. Now in this one, number three, 
this is a situation where all the people doing biology do art. We've got here one person does art only, two people do biology, three people don't do anything. We often call B a subset of A. It's within A. And again, you might like to try these two examples. Okay, you can pause the video, come back in a moment and uh, see if you've got the right answer. Well, okay, if you had a go, let's see how you got on. Again, we've got probability someone does art given that they did biology. Well, we know that they did biology, so there's only just two people doing biology, so that would be our denominator there two. But of these two people, how many did art? Well, both these two people did art because they're within A. So it's two out of two equals one. Okay, it's guaranteed that if somebody's doing biology, they will be doing art. And what about this one? Probability of B given A. So we know that they do art. So how many people do art? Well, it's two and one, okay? A total of three people doing art. So that's our denominator here, three people. And how many do biology? Just the two out of all the people doing art. So it's going to be two thirds. Okay, now we'll come on to number four. In this one, we've got, say, three subjects. A for art, B for biology, and let's say C for chemistry. And I've got all the numbers here of different numbers of people doing various subjects. Okay? Just quickly run through some of these. Just to remind you, one person here does art only. This two here is two people do art and biology, but not chemistry. The five do all three. This three here, three people do biology only, and so on. Eight people. Eight people don't do anything. Well, I've got a few questions here that basically extend just these ideas up here only to a question with three sets, art, biology and chemistry in this case. So you might like to pause the video and just have a go at these ones, see how you get on. Well, let's just run through these. First one then, probability that someone does biology given that they do chemistry. So we know that they do chemistry. So how many people do chemistry? That's going to be our denominator. The number of people doing chemistry is in C. That would be to add up the 4, 5, 6 and 7. And if you add up 4, 5, 6 and 7, you should find you get 22. So 22 people doing chemistry. And of those people doing chemistry, what's the probability that someone does biology? Well, it'll be these two categories here, five and the six. Five people do all three, but they certainly do biology. Six people do just biology and chemistry, but nonetheless, they do biology. So it's a total of 11 people, five and six, 11 people do biology compared to those doing chemistry. Let's look at the next one. Probability of doing all three subjects given that someone does two subjects. Okay, so how many people do two subjects? Well, I haven't said two subjects only here, okay? So it's just doing the, the, those, those two subjects, given that they do two subjects. Now, that would be this two here, these two people do two subjects, art and biology. Four people here do art and chemistry. Six people here do biology and chemistry. But you've got to be careful. I didn't say just doing two subjects, but they do two subjects. Now, these five people here do two subjects. Okay, they do three subjects, I know that, but they do 
two subjects. So for the denominator here it's going to be the sum of 2, 5, 4 and 6 and if you add that up you're going to get 17. 2, 4, 5 and 6 comes to 17. So that's our denominator and how many of these people in this region in here do all three subjects? Well it's these five people so it's 5 out of 17. And for this last one what's the probability then that someone does art and biology given that they do not do chemistry? Well if they do not do chemistry that's going to be the people outside of C. And that's going to be the one person here, these two people, these three people and these eight people. Okay, one, two, three and eight. They're the number of people that do not do chemistry. So if you add one, two, three and eight, that comes to 14 and that's your denominator here, 14. So of these people, how many do art and biology? So of these people, that's the one, two, three and eight, how many do art and biology? Well, it's going to be just these two people here. Alright, so that will be 2 out of 14. Now I know that this cancels down to a half and I know this cancels down to 1 seventh. But I'm just leaving them like that just so that you can see how I got my particular probabilities. Alright, well I hope that's given you some idea now how you can handle conditional probability from Venn diagrams. Well that brings us now then to the end of this tutorial.